In this video, I'm going to explore the EIP-1155 multi-token standard, and I'm also going to show you an example of a real-life 1155 smart contract, the Adidas Originals Into the Metaverse, which, as you can see, follows ERC-1155. ERC-1155 is basically a combination of fungible and non-fungible tokens, ERC-20 and ERC-721. If you're not familiar with ERC-20 and ERC-721, I highly recommend learning about those standards first before watching this video. As a quick recap, ERC-20 is the standard for fungible tokens. Fungible tokens are tokens that are pretty much identical to one another, for example, dollar bills or gold bars. ERC-20 keeps track of the owners of tokens using a structure like this. On one side, you have the address or the owner, and on this right side, you have the balance. This is very similar to what we have in our bank accounts. In this case, Alice has 100 tokens, Bob has 50 tokens, and Charlie has 60 tokens. All these tokens are identical to one another. ERC-721 is the standard for non-fungible tokens. For non-fungible tokens, all tokens are unique. Every token in an ERC-721 smart contract has a unique token ID. Therefore, to keep track of the owner owners of these tokens, we have this mapping. On the left side, we have a token ID, and on the right side, we have the owner or address that owns that token. Token ID 1 is owned by Alice. Token ID 2 is owned by Charlie. Token ID 3 is owned by Bob. Every single token ID must have its own address. Every single token ID to address pair must be stored on the blockchain. If an owner owns multiple tokens, there are separate rows to demonstrate that ownership. For example, Alice owns two tokens, token ID 1 and token ID 4. The ERC-721 contract has to store both pieces of information separately. That's why we have one row for token ID 1 and the second row for token ID 4, even though they're both owned by Alice. ERC-1155 is basically a combination of ERC-20 and ERC-721. ERC-1155 can have token IDs that that represent both fungible and non-fungible tokens. Let's look at the first case of a fungible token. Let's say token ID number one has a total supply of six. Alice can have three of the tokens, Bob can have one token, and Charlie can have two tokens. So three plus one plus two totals up to six. This is a fungible token type because there is more than one instance of token ID one. If there were only one instance of token ID one, it would be an NFT. This is what we have in the second case with token ID two. This is a non-fungible token. There is only one of them, and that one token is owned by Alice. We can visualize this in code by looking at the Open Zeppelin implementation of ERC-1155. On line 24, Open Zeppelin is using a nested mapping to keep track of the balances. The first key in the mapping represents the token ID. The second key represents the address or the owner for that token ID. And finally, the value represents the count of that token that is owned by that owner. Going back to our example, let's say you want to find out how many tokens Alice owns of token ID 1. To query this in the mapping, the first key is going to be the token ID. The second key is going to be the address of Alice. Finally, this will return the value of three because Alice owns three tokens of token ID one. The same process applies even if the token is a non-fungible token. The first key is the token ID, which is token ID two. The second key is Alice's address. And finally, you can see that the balance of Alice is one. This means that Alice owns one token of token ID2. Open Zeppelin also has a really good example of this in their documentation on ERC-1155. In this example, they're using ERC-1155 to create items for a game. Games usually have some kind of fiat currency, for example, gold or silver. In games where you're using gold and silver coins to buy items, you need a very high supply of those coins. That's why gold has a total supply of 10 to the power of 18, and silver has a total supply of 10 to the power of 27. Therefore, gold and silver are examples of tokens that represent fungible tokens. However, we can also have tokens that represent NFTs, in this case, Thor's hammer. This could be a very rare item in your game in which there is only one of them. That's why here we can see that Thor's hammer has a total supply of one. This means that players can own multiple instances of gold coins and silver coins, but there is only one instance of Thor's hammer that can only belong to at most one player at any time. Lastly, we have some more common items such as swords and shields. The total supply of swords in the game is less than the total supply of gold coins but it's still greater than the number of Thor's hammers because there's only one Thor's hammer. A sword and a shield might be common items that are used by players, so you're gonna have a pretty high supply of them. For example, 10 to the power of nine. To summarize, in ERC-1155, if the token supply is equal to one, then this token is an NFT. If the supply of that token is greater than one, then it's not an NFT and it's a fungible token because you can have more than one instance of them in your smart contract.
ERC-1155 allows for more efficient transfers of tokens, which allows you to save more gas. To explain this, let's first look at how tokens are transferred in ERC-721. This ERC-721 standard only allows transferring one NFT at a time. For example, let's say you have three tokens and you want to transfer them all to Bob. This would require three separate transfers. First, you would transfer token ID1, then you would transfer token ID5, and then you would transfer token ID8. Each of these separate transfers has its own gas fee. If you're doing many, many transfers, this can be quite expensive. Expensive. For example, if you wanted to transfer 1,000 gold coins to someone and each gold coin was an NFT, this would require 1,000 separate transfers. ERC-1155 introduces batch transfers, in which you can transfer multiple token types at a time, and for each token type, you can transfer multiple instances of that token. For example, let's say you have two different token IDs, 5 and 8, and you want to transfer multiple instances of those tokens to Bob. Then in that same transaction, you can transfer 10 tokens of token ID 5, and also 4 tokens of token ID 8. Going back to our game, example, this means you could transfer 1,000 gold and 10 shields at the same time. The methods for transferring tokens in ERC-1155 are very similar to the transfer methods for ERC-20 and ERC-721. For example, you have the address of the sender, the address of the recipient, and the token ID that you're transferring. For 1155, you also have to pass in a value here, which represents how many of this token you want to send. The method to do a batch transfer is very similar to the method for doing a single transfer, except this time you're simply passing in an array of all of the token and count pairs that you want to transfer. However, this does not mean that you should switch over to using ERC-1155 right away. If you want to count how many token IDs and how many instances of those tokens are owned by a user, out of the box, there is no way to do that. This is also described in the 1155 proposal itself. In order to keep storage requirements light, enumerating the tokens, which means discovering the IDs and values of the tokens, must be done using event logs. They recommend that you maintain a local database containing the token ID, to supply, and URI. This is built by monitoring the transfer and URI events, starting from the block the smart contract was deployed until the latest block. This is a big downside to using 1155, because this means you're relying on a third party such as an exchange or a blockchain explorer in order to keep track of your tokens. If you want to be able to enumerate your 1155 tokens yourself, you might have to use something like the graph which is a protocol for indexing and querying data from blockchains. However, obviously, not everyone has the time to set this up and the resources to pay for this. A simpler way is to rely on a third party, such as Alchemy. They offer APIs to get all the NFTs minted by an address, which includes ERC-721 and ERC-1155. However, this means that you now have to rely on a third party, such as Alchemy. If there's a bug in the Alchemy code, then you will also be impacted. The way these third parties are able to offer this API is exactly by monitoring all the transactions and events on the blockchain, block by block, exactly as specified in that 1155 token standard. If you've seen my past video on ERC-721 enumerable, then you know that 1155 is basically missing this extension. ERC-721 enumerable allows you to enumerate all the tokens that are owned by an owner using these three functions, total supply, token of owner by index, and token by index. To implement the same extension for 1155 would be super complicated and gas heavy. If such an extension were available for ERC-1155, then every time you do a transfer of your 1155 tokens, a lot of gas would have to be consumed in order to keep the internal data structures up to date, such that these helper functions are accurate. ERC-1155 also has many features that are similar to ERC-721. For example, you can have metadata associated with each token ID. For safe transfers, this standard uses ERC-1165. This means that before transferring ERC-1155 tokens to a recipient, the contract will check if the recipient is able to handle ERC-1155 tokens. The receiving contract should implement ERC-1155 token receiver. During a transfer, the sender can call on ERC-1155 receive to verify that the recipient is able to handle 1155 tokens. If you're not familiar with these concepts, you can watch my previous videos on ERC-165 and the ERC-721 token receiver. Finally, let's look at a real-life ERC-1155 contract, the Adidas Originals Into the Metaverse. I'm not affiliated with Adidas in any way, and I don't recommend that you buy this at all. I'm simply using this as an example because this was the first example I found of an ERC-1155 contract that's being used in production. This project is basically a partnership between Adidas and some other big players in the crypto space, such as Board Ape Yacht Club. In the first phase, they have a NFT supply of 30,000 tokens. They have an early access, which is already sold out, in which they they were selling 20,000 tokens. On the OpenSea page for this item, 
we can see that this is an 1155 token with token ID 0. What differentiates this item from a normal ERC721 token is that you can have multiple owners and more than one supply. For this token, we have 30,000 instances of this token and we have 21,000 owners. That means 21,000 owners collectively own 30,000 instances of this token. That simply is not possible with ERC721. Now let's look at the smart contract code. On line 20, we can see this contract is called Adidas Originals and it's an ERC1155 contract. The max supply is set to 30,000, which makes sense because on OpenSea, we can see the total supply is 30,000. During the early access, they released 20,380 of them. The first 380 were reserved for special partners and then the remaining 20,000 were sold to buyers. In the purchase method that is called when purchasing these tokens, you can see that they are always calling the mint method with the token ID of zero. That is because for this contract, they are only allowing one token type, token ID zero. In OpenSea, you can see that this token ID is for token ID zero. In this Adidas collection, there is only one item and that is the token ID zero, which has 30,000 instances and 21,000 owners. There are no other token IDs in this collection, only token ID zero. During the call to mint, you can also specify the amount of tokens that you're buying. This is also different from ERC721 because in ERC721, you can only mint one token ID at a time and you are only able to get one instance of that token ID. Whereas for 1155, you can mint multiple instances of that token ID when you're minting. I'll put the link to this smart contract in the video description so that you can study it in your own time if you want to learn more about what an actual ERC 1155 contract looks like. This contract is pretty beginner friendly and as you're studying the code, you can feel free to read the description here and see if that confirms your understanding of what the code is doing. Again, I do not recommend buying this token at all. I'm simply saying this is an example that you can use to learn more about ERC 1155 contracts. If you have any questions about ERC 1155, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you learned something, please give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.